Geographical Union and member International Science Council to rightfully promote a global and national culture of disaster risk reduction. Sir, today what we are here today is because of you. You are the one who initiated this uh, department and here we are almost 2017 we started this department and two batches already passed out from this department. Thank you so much sir and thank you very much for accepting our request in a very short notice and accepted to deliver a lecture today. We are very much grateful to you, sir. On this occasion, I would like to welcome all the participants who registered for this event. And thank you so much for giving your continuous support to us. I expect the same support in future days also. Thank you once again and welcome you all to this great occasion today. Thank you. Over to Arun. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, may I now in, uh, invite uh, Dr. E. Venkateshan, sir, to introduce our uh, special invited uh, speaker. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Arun. Respected Head Department of Geography, Professor uh, Solosana Shekhar, ma'am, and uh, respected special speaker for today's event, uh, Professor R.B. Singh, sir, my faculty colleagues, students, research scholars, and participants. A very uh, warm good morning to you all. So this is uh, Dr. E. Venkatesham, Assistant Professor of Geography, CUT and Thiruvaru. It's an honor and privilege for me to introduce the, the special speaker of today's event, Professor R.B. Singh, sir. In fact, he doesn't need any uh, introduction uh, because he is a well-known, complete and accomplished geographer. And he is like a father figure to the current uh, fraternity of geography in India and abroad. To begin with, uh, Professor R.B. Singh, sir, uh, did his uh, MA in 1977, PhD in 1981 from uh, Benares uh, Hindu University, Uttar Pradesh. And he took uh, training in GIS technology in the field of environment during 1988 and uh, 89 from uh, the prestigious uh, United Nations Institute of Training and Research, uh, Lausanne, Switzerland. And as far as his professional experiences are concerned, uh, Professor R.B. Singh, sir, started his professional career as a lecturer in 1985 and uh, he served in that capacity up to 1988 and uh, he was the research scientist B, uh, UGC research scientist B between 1988 and 1996, uh, research scientist C between 1996 and uh, 2002. And in 2002, he joined as professor in geography, uh, Delhi School of Economics, University of Delhi. And he is out there in the capacity until he recently reside, uh, retired as a professor of geography. And his present affiliations are uh, Professor Singh is Vice President, International Geographical Union, that is otherwise known, otherwise known as IGU, since 2012, and is elected uh, again for second consecutive term for 2016 and 20. Uh, Dr. Singh is presently Chair, Research Council, ICHIR, Central Food Technology Research Institute, Mysore. Member Research Council, CSIR, uh, Central Institute of uh, Medical and Aromatic Plants, Lucknow, and member of International Council of Science, prestigious scientific uh, committee, health and well-being in changing urban environment system analysis approach. He is Springer uh, Series Editor. He is IAP Global Network of Science Academy uh, representative on disaster risk reduction. And uh, his specializations are uh, uh, land use and environmental studies, climate change, urban regional development, disaster management, remote sensing, and GIS. And as far as his uh, research and published works are uh, concerned, he has 14 books to his credit and uh, 49 edited research, research volumes and more than 230 research papers published in various uh, international journals. Uh, some of the prestigious journals include Climate Dynamics, Current Science, Energy, Theoretical and Applied Climatology, etc. And he was special series editor for prestigious journals like uh, Sustainability Advances in uh, Meteorology, Physics and uh, Chemistry of the Earth, NAM today. He is editorial uh, committee member of Journal of Mountain Science and uh, many more uh, such uh, journals related to geography. Uh, in particular, and social science in general, and uh, uh, he uh, during the uh, his uh, span of uh, career, he got so many international awards and fellowships 
that includes he was the <laughs> prestigious Japan Society for Promotion of Science research fellow at Hiroshima in 2013 and UNESCO ISSC Paris Research and Study Grant Award in Social Human Science 1988 and uh, also, he was awarded several travel fellowships, support from UN uh, agencies like UNEP, UNITAR, UNI, uh, NGR, IAP, UNU, UNCRD, uh, WCRP, IHS, IPU, NASDA, and so many uh, prestigious world bodies. And uh, to present and participate in conferences and present papers, uh, in the countries such as the USA, Canada, Mexico, Japan, Australia, and Finland, Denmark, Spain, UK, Netherlands, Norway, Germany, Switzerland, Russia, Georgia, Armenia, Poland, Czech Republic, Mongolia, Malaysia, Thailand, Egypt, China, Taiwan, Tunisia, Sweden, and many countries. Uh, as far as the international national academic recognitions are concerned, uh, if you read out the list, it will go on like uh, uh, it might take an hour or two. So there are so many uh, reputed uh, recognitions for uh, Professor Arthur And uh, uh, he also uh, has uh, one of some of the reputed collaborative major research projects uh, undertaken by him, uh, which includes uh, uh, the collaboration with the University of Turku, Finland. Uh, University of Winnipeg, Canada, and uh, the University of uh, uh, Groningen, the Netherlands, and uh, the University of uh, Manitoba, Canada, and then uh, uh, Imperial College, London, UK. And as far as administrative positions he held uh, includes, he served as head department of geography, the Delhi School of Economics, University of Delhi, between 2013 and 16, During his uh, headship, uh, the Department of Geography received two prestigious recognitions. One is second position among all the departments of the University of Delhi in uh, showcasing group good practices at Antajwani 2014. And the second one is under uh, uh, QS World University ranking. The department uh, featured rank one as the best institutions in uh, India for geography. He also served as provost, warden, and resident uh, tutor, etc., in the University of Delhi. And uh, uh, this is the brief introduction of the speaker. So the day is uh, perfectly set, and the topic is need of the very much need of the hour. And the speaker, uh, it couldn't be better than R.B. Singh sir. Now, I humbly request Professor R.B. Singh sir to deliver his invaluable lecture and enlighten the gathering. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bengtasanji. I'm Professor Sulechanaji, head of the department. Dr. Bala Suramani. Dr. Arun, Arun K. Uh, other colleagues, dear students, participants. Today, as already highlighted by Professor Sulochana Ji, we are every year we celebrate this International Disaster Risk Reduction Day. After the first initiative taken by the United Nations on what I would like to call uh, IDNDR, International Decade of Natural Disaster Reduction. May I have the second slide? So here I am giving the three important process. First, we like to remind you the DRR through UN initiative. First initiative taken in 1990 to 1999, Yokohama framework, International Decade of Natural Disaster Reduction. That was the starting point. I was fortunate to attend this also, uh, this process. 
and more you know component of mitigation came into existence otherwise earlier our focus was more on relief then you know after that a kobe earthquake took place and very important event also initiated at haigo haigo is a prefecture where kobe is located so 2005 to 2015 and where you know building resilience for nations and community to disaster this aspects came into existence and we realized that we had to increase the capacity of individual capacity of community as you, if you will remember disaster is equal to hazard into vulnerability and then we brought a very important component keywords minus capacity so disaster now we call disaster is equal to hazard into vulnerability minus capacity so capacity of community is a very very important to cope with the natural disasters and living with disaster a very important component came into existence after that you will remember a very important you know impact took place through you know sen uh, is japan tsunami affected area what it is called the sendai region sendai is another prefecture and sendai is also city and then you know at sendai third important initiative taken by global community and then we decided for disaster risk reduction so since then our all efforts in march 2000 since to march 2015 then home minister sri rajnath singh you know led the indian delegation at sendai and we also signed the very important document after that our very important also the updated national disaster management act came into existence and many initiative taken at the ndma level national disaster management authority level next one so i would like to bring before you the four important uh task priorities identify by by sen uh, sendai framework of disaster risk reduction priority 1 understanding disaster risk improving our understanding of disaster risk and you know we have the few important term i will explain uh vulnerability exposure risk the are the interlinked elements and how we can improve our the understanding regarding the disaster risk priority 2 strengthening disaster risk governance to manage disaster risk how you know the disaster risk should become the important part of disaster risk governance and so that is why the role of the government how we can encourage the people's participation in the program identified by people not by the government then priority 3 
investing in disaster risk reduction for resilience how we can uh invest because without investing how we can bring incentives how we can bring disincentives for disaster risk reduction for resilience for improving the capacity and then priority 4 enhancing disaster preparedness for effective response and to build back better that very important term came into existence particularly for recovery recover uh, rehabilitation and reconstruction how we can bring in the same stage or similar to same stage or relatively better how we can move from response to recovery quickly that is a very very important task how we can quickly move towards response to recovery next one so i would like to bring before you the few important terms exposure particularly relates to people for party system or other elements present in the hazard zones that are thereby subject to potential losses vulnerability the characteristics and circumstances of a community system or asset that make it susceptible to damaging effect of a hazard so vulnerability play a very very important role for exposure to and for converting natural hazard into the disaster very broadly speaking natural hazards are extreme events but when natural hazards are meeting with the people people uh, meeting meeting natural hazards meeting with institution property it becomes disaster meeting means affecting next one next resilience how we can improve ability of a system community or society exposed to hazard to resist absorb accommodate to and recover from the effects of a hazard in a very timely and efficient manner very quickly how we can do so that is why you know it is very important how we can move quickly to response to recovery risk is a combination of consequences of a event and the associated likelihood probability of its occurrence and so that is why as a geographer or scientist we all are very actively involved in the process of risk assessment this assessment is the overall process of risk identification risk analysis risk evaluation and i would like to use the another term risk communication risk communication is emerging a very very important you know thing for policy makers to do and wherever we have quickly uh, done the risk communication we are able to reduce the loss of life as you might have seen in the case of cyclones in recent cyclones we are able to reduce the uh, casualty loss of life at least because of the quickly this communication next one so here you can see the risk elements 
in different industries. Like I can give you the example of in case of flood, everything located in the plant pen, crops, live stock, machinery, equipment infrastructure, weak buildings. There is a say, it is a mud killing the people and it is the cement saving the people. And who own the mud houses? Poor people. Earthquake, weak building, their occupants and contents, machinery, equipment, Somani cyclone, everything flows to the coastal area, crops, livestock, public. And also I can tell you the groundwater. After the tsunami in the eastern side, sea water into, uh, 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 introduced in the uh, groundwater. And so you can find the land you change, landslide, everything located on or at base of a steep slopes, cliff, tops, road, infrastructure, building on silo foundation. Drought, life and health of the, those involved in the drought prone area, livestock, crops, local economy. Next one. So we have to do the exposure mapping. Generally, geographers, as we are expertised in remote sensing GIS, we can analyze the data population in terms of poverty, vulnerability, quality of population, building in terms of the structure type, likelihoods, livestock, crops, industry, critical facility, infrastructure, roads, bridges, airports, ports. Next one. And so, we can do also the risk assessment and integration of resource data. The assessment of vulnerability and exposure range from global to local scale, participatory approaches, which need to be integrated. The appropriateness of methods used for these assessment depends on the purpose of the analysis, time, geographic scale involved the resources available, the number of type of actors, and economic and governance factors. You know, unmanned aircraft like drone and all aerial photographs are becoming very, very important for, you know, analyzing these phenomena and particularly a blanche. It is very difficult to go in the high Himalayan area close to the avalanche place. Very difficult to go to landslides area. So that is why, you know, unmanned aircraft is very, very important. Many schemes came into existence after the Kedarnath flood, you know, tragedy. And uh, and potential expansion may occur, public and property. Next one. So, hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Audible, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Audible, sir. Yes, sir. Audible, sir. Okay. So you can see this. The it is very important to have the usage of multi-hazard maps. I think. 
we are expertise in the human induced hazards or natural induced hazards so we can do both hazard and risk identification taking to consideration of the various factors emergency response and many our tools and techniques geographical tools and techniques can be used and our first responders like disaster response force you know are very well equipped our very many geographical phenomena for estimating the population loss area loss they use also the gis they use the topographical sheets and other you know for safe evacuation rescue relief and rehabilitation next one now i would like to bring before you the very important component rainfall pattern in our india and this one is a very important driver for disasters so that is why we have flooding in the northern india because there exist a highland lowland interactive system up stream and down stream relationship so up stream you know uh, in the himalaya the influences the down stream of indus ganga and brahmaputra then you know western side if you go it is a very uh, low rain fall area and starting from you know southern part of punjab haryana to karnataka a big chunk of area you know what i would like to call where precipitation is less than potential evapotranspiration and rain fed areas dry land areas almost 68% of area generally classified as a dry lands in our country so you can understand these are very frequently affected by the drought then we have the shadow area and low rain fall zone also in the some part of southern high rain fall in the eastern ghat high rain fall also in the eastern coastal region and particularly the northeast region a very high rain fall you know and more than 2500 mm and some places more than 5000 mm next one so this climate change you know we do not have much change you know at present but certainly we can get, we are getting the sign and signals and climate change is expected to increase the frequency and intensity of current hazards and the probability of extreme events extreme events within the variability of climate system are by far the largest cause of natural disasters therefore resilience and adaptive capacity of traditional network and land use system to cope with climate variability extremes are weakening while frequency and magnitude of climate variability and land use intensity are on rise next one and so you can see this the uh, how carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide three important indicators greenhouse gases are increased in recent years particularly after the 1950 1960 next one and so that you i know you can find the very di- different pattern of rate fall changes and you can see the many places decreasing the whole uh, starting from the northern to southern you know kerala a patch in the middle you know decreasing then we have the increasing in the western part and eastern part and decreasing significantly in uttar pradesh so broadly these are the very uneven distribution next one 
If you see the IMD data, we have continuous increase and decrease. So, you know, climatic variability phenomena is very much prominent. But in recent years, after 2000, we have continuous increase. Next one. And so, if you see the agroclimatic wise change in temperature, we have the largely change in the winter area, but it varies again from the different region. And very substantial change in the semi-arid region, you can see. And we analyzed also the data of Rajasthan and we find the very substantial change. Uh, maybe constant change, constant in the varied western, some part of the western, particularly in the autumn and monsoon type. So more changes you can find in the uh, spring, summer, monsoon, and winter time we have more change in the flood prone areas and the sub uh, sub flood prone areas and semi arid eastern plains. Next one. lot of you know projection given uh, by different scholars and you can see broadly we can find the if we have the but now we have less than one degree temperature change in our country but if you will have the temperature change of two degree then we will have around three to minus three to minus six net agricultural level noon change in the loss. And if we will have the 3.5, 3.5, then we have very substantial loss in the change. So this is a, a projection model is a very, very important because uh, we, ha we are having a just self-reliance. And one drought can bring down our total production to 180 million metric tons and all. So, you know, uh, we have to take care of this phenomenon. Next one. And so, climate change impact and induced disaster risks are very, very important. And past three decades, climate related natural disasters occurred Fights as frequently killed or affected 70 times many people and caused twice as much damage worldwide as did earthquakes and Vulcan. So you can understand from your own perception the type of problem we are getting. Next one. Uh, and already uh, you know, between 2000 and 2004, every 326 climate disasters were reported. Overall, crop yields 10 to 20% by 2050 because of the warming and drying. But there are places where yield losses may be much more severe. Next one. These are the few important disasters, you know, and uh, particularly number of the dates you know, in different time periods, you can see we have the recent years, the Kerala flood, Chennai flood, Jammu Kashmir flood, the uh, Uttarakhand area, few floods. So first, I would like to bring before you the very important drivers, complexity of next complexity of topography and Himalayan This is the Nanda Devi Biosphere Reserve. And you can see this, the how biodiversity, even in the North region, this biodiversity hotspots is very much 
dependent on the glaciers water our indus ganga and brahmaputra plains they get the water from the ridge glaciers retreating next one another important point i would like to bring before you the retreating glaciers milan donagiri and pipra these three small glaciers and after taking into consideration of the topocity analysis of old and new we found the changes in the glaciers and recent satellite data showing this the several other glaciers like gangotri very important you know where we have the uh, evidence of retreating the glaciers next one and so you can see this changing landscape due to the next one ah yes uh, a changing landscape like dead glacial mount and melting from beneath making the surface collapsible so this shows the the glacial ice melt and this is a confluence of ratnaban and south south uh, nilgiri glacier and abrupt changes in the slope ablation zone this means the loss in the ice loss next one another important phenomena we face particularly in the two state i would like to mention the uh, sikkim and himachal pradesh risk assessment of glacier lake outburst flood and these are the you know hope you will remember the one tarachu lake in the china and brought lot of impact in himachal pradesh flooding so glacier lake outburst it is called the glow is a very important you know problem and we have to take care of because this can bring a lot of changes in down streams due to the flooding next one and so you can see here a very important step taken next one the mapping neighborhood in uttarakhand and after involvement of the community the department of science and technology they have taken a very important measures next one and next is a uh, the this uh, uh flood prone areas in the you have seen and then this is a mapping neighborhood in the uttarakhand is a very important and even in our city departments they can identify the risk prone area they can you know we have dissertation at a master level so such dissertation can be in, uh, you know given to the students identifying the risk in the department in the university level in the city level where the university is located in your neighborhood in your own locality in your own house lo- uh, surrounding so you know this type of the task can be given you know next one next one next so here you can see the ipc 2007 in the ganga brahmaputra river basin under the crisis glacier melt in the himalaya is projected to increase the flooding and avalanche from destabilized slopes and to affect water resources within the next two or three decades this will be followed by decreased river flow as the is projected by obvious for this 30% of the south asia by the mid 21st century according to the intergovernmental panel on climate next one here you can see this the uh, uh, next one we have identified the 
in the Assam area, the 70 important indicators, vulnerability issues, you can see, I am giving you just one slide example. This type of, you know, can be given to the assignment and the students can identify one time entire crop loss in that area, three time entire standing crop loss, loss of stored seeds, seed bed erosion, sand deposition, occupational loss, primary, secondary, tertiary, cattle loss, chicken loss, goat loss, pond fish loss, poultry loss, plant loss, household damage loss, livestock loss, storage, latrine waste, tubule, cropland. So, you know, these are the very important uh, 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 point and you can identify other, you know, vulnerability issue related to your own area and such thing, you know, will be the best on the people's perception and this is always very, very helpful for the, uh, you know, communicate to the policy maker. Next one. Next one. So here you can see the Ram Ganga Basin. We have used the census data, remote sensing data, and we identified the number of villages affected by flood, number of, you know, uh, area affected by flood and flood zoning. So this type of map is a very, very important uh, for policy makers to undertake the, you know, relief operations. So this shows that how geographers are very well equipped to communicate to policy makers about a different type of disaster. Next one. Climate induced disaster and resilience building. You know, that we have to take a very important measure because, you know, uh, according to estimate by the World Bank, direct losses from natural disaster are up to 2% of the India GDP. More importantly, the impact of most of the disaster is disproportionately high on the poor. So you can understand from your own perception the type of, you know, climate-induced disaster we have and uh, other natural disaster, and we have to undertake resili resilience building measures. Next one. Monitoring and assessment of flood and drought. I am giving you the, some examples. Next. I am giving you this the study area, Middle Ganga Plain, 13 water sets have been selected. This is a very important for the rice producing area uh, and flood affected area has increased since independence. Next. We have used the different type of database, our own database, this three, and overlay analysis, image classification, next one. And here you can see this, the identifying the flood affected area, uh, particularly the Son, Ganga Son, Karamnasa area, interclue region, and uh, you can see this uh, how where we have the more severe flood, where we have more moderate flood, where we have the highland river, and so this type of the exercise is very very important to even for the policy makers for different type of land usage. Next one. 
so flooding is considered is a very serious limitation for agriculture in the area and different type of statistical we generated where we have a severe floods all occur how you know the different land use can be proposed and already we have proposed also next one this one you know another important drought frequency you know uh, you can see 2000 to 2019 the showing the district level agricultural drought occurrence frequency uh, this type of the map is also very very important particularly for relief operation for declaring the drought prone areas the uh, agricultural planning so uh, crop forecasting division uh, is uh, of ministry of environment and forest you know uh, collected the different data from the different states and this type of map next one risk assessment i would like to give you the some examples next one and here you can see this the potential soil erosion risk how we can prepare in any area this is one water set in uttarakhand so we have taken the slope map land use map altitude maps soil erodibility map rainfall erodibility map and then we have you know in gis you know index using the erdas index you know we have prepared where you know scarcely vulnerable area moderately vulnerable area highly vulnerable area extremely vulnerable area extremely vulnerable area means where we have a high slope area less uh, land use uh, erodible soil and high rainfall and vice versa you know in other uh, opposite in the scarcely vulnerable area next you know land science risk assessment mapping we have done for using the settlement road agriculture dense forest sparse forest barren land uh, water body just snow cover distance from that area and then you know next one we have prepared in this area uh, kullu rohtang pass the different type of the uh, risk very high risk high risk moderate risk low risk and very low risk so you can see that uh, a very low risk in the northern side where human habitation is less uh, less you know road also but when you come to the southern side more you know road and construction activity so we have the more vulnerability next one this map is another pre and post flood satellite image of jammu kashmir flood and you can see the how flooding is totally visible such type of maps is very important to compare the past and pre uh, you know post and pre flood area and even for identifying the flood prone and we can do the uh, government can do also the lot of exercise next one this integrated risk assessment you know we have done for uh uttar kashi area first we have done the avalanche risk flood risk landslide risk and soil erosion risk and then superimpose all and then we found integrated risk assessment so we can prepare the such type of research integrated risk assessment for the uh, policy makers next one this map you know prepared during the falling the impact of you know using the satellite data the impact of rainfall and you can see the how dense uh, rainfall you know reduce in the surrounding area such type of the maps are very very important to uh, uh, to identify the affected area next term i would like to give you example of multi hazard mapping using gis and next one uh, particularly for the kohima town 
नागालैंड नेक्स्ट वन नेक्स्ट वन नेक्स्ट सो यू कैन सी हियर द फर्स्ट अर्थक्वेक डैमेज वी आर आइडेंटिफाइड यू नो प्रोबेबिलिटी टेकिंग टू कंसिडरेशन ऑफ द वेरियस टाइप ऑफ द हाउसिंग स्ट्रक्चर नेक्स्ट वन then landslide hazard in the same area take into consideration of land use geology geomorphology slope steepness slope direction distance from floor uh, faults and lineament terrain de density and density distance from the road next one next so here is the result you can see the where we have the Uh, uh, landslide occurrence where we have a high, low, and moderate. Then next, urban fire hazards. Again, you know, taken into consideration of building typology, building material, a space between building, distance from the road, distance from the fire service station. So all were taken into consideration. Next one, and here you know uh, you can see the uh, type of buildings, you know, and percentage. given next one and here is the fire susceptibility maps next of the fire susceptibility map next one next so fire susceptibility map and so we all combine together next so you, you can see number of one uh, uh, 80 civil buildings are there where we have probability of earthquake landslides or fire both and 622 buildings where no hazards so such exercise can be very very uh, useful for the policy makers next one next one and here is the final map next one this one is the final map and you can see this the uh, where we have the earthquake where we have earthquake and fire where we have earthquake and landslide where we have all three so you know this type of the maps are very very important next one world wide distribution of buildings and population with multiple hazard risk you know you can see here all distribution next one so few minutes very quickly i would like to devote on the mitigating the climate change action on earth and towards the resilience and so that is why you know first i would like to bring before you the national action plan of climate change solar mission enhance energy efficiency sustainable habitat water mission uh, sustainable agriculture and green growth all you know we have to give the national mission for strategic knowledge on climate change next one and sdg we have to bring uh, all 17 sdg and take the very effective measure for implementing this because we have to uh achieve this by 2030 also so it is very important that we can uh, uh, uh enhance our resources for you know implementing this next one so uh, one important example i would like to give this the how we can move from 2014 to 2030 the energy and 23% to 31% total renewables nuclear may be not much because of the several other uh, side effects 1% and we have to reduce uh, 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 the oil and the coal next one here is the performance of the states and union territory on the sdg india index and you can see this the uh, southern states are performing very well 
and then in uh, the Himachal Pradesh in the north and Sikkim, uh, they they are more Achiva, and but the other places in the whole northern India, we had to implement more effectively. So uh, uh, by last year, you know these are the very important performance of the different states. Next one. You know, just I would like to give you mitigation measures for flood disasters, flood warning system, and particularly the local warning system, community usable arching system, a strengthening embankment of uh, along the rivers, dredging, desilting activity, a stopping illegal construction, encroachment in the surrounding area, training of common people regarding the risk reduction. A state government should also help the academic institutions, particularly for mapping and other type of donation. Long-term measures you can take like a institutionalizing a state disaster management machinery in many states already in operation, proper capacity building to these institutions, a state disaster management act must come on the pattern of the national capacity building program the development activity, land use policy, a state land use policy must be implemented. It is very, very important. Large scale afforestation, flood proofing, you know, can be taken. Next one. And finally, I would like to conclude that we have to take a very effective measure for multi hazard mapping. You know, we have to incorporate the key markers of socioeconomic vulnerability and resilience. And we have to deal with the several uh, for improve the exposure databases and model in issues of a scale, data access, type of data, advanced GIS analysis approaches. Thank you very much. If you have any question, I will be very happy to answer. Thank you so much, sir. I uh, may now ask the participants uh, to ask their questions. If you have any queries, uh, you may ask uh, Professor Ravi uh, Singh, sir. Students, now the forum is open for discussion. You can ask uh, questions or if you want any clarification with the professor, you can ask now. Arun, any questions in the chat box? No, sir. No. I hope you can summarize, I think, uh, students. Appreciated the lecture, and I could find the main appreciation to the chief guest.
I think on Lokesh asked a question. Arun, could you read it? Uh, there's a question from Lokesh Khan, second MSC uh, job of PCOP. Uh, in the recent building collapse in Mumbai, is it the problem of construction practice? This is the question from Lokesh Khan. Hello? Sir? Sir, yes, sir, you're audible. Yeah. Uh, can you repeat? Yes, sir. Uh, there's a question from Lokesh Kant, and the question is In the recent building collapse in Mumbai, is it the problem of construction practices? This is the question. Uh, uh, is it the problem of uh, construction, construction practices? Practice. Construction practice. Construction? Yes, sir. You know, uh, as as you can see, you know, in case of Kohima, the building type of building is a very, very important vulnerable. And generally, we uh, uh, welcome Professor Kumar Swami. Welcome. Good morning, sir. Sorry, I was here. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, uh, you might have seen, you know, for earthquake, it is a very important to see the uh the quality of building and you know our building in many parts of kolkata even i saw in the central part or mumbai also many buildings are there so it is a uh, due to the old you know character of the building one one important uh, you know criteria you can see then you know sometimes we heard many times the new building also collapsed and the bridge edge collapsed. So where, you know, it is due to the uh, uh, construction related problem, you know, they use the very standard material, even sometimes uh, te techniques and uh, Several, you know, at the same time, you know, they have to take the several uh, uh, work and they do not give the proper attention. You know, what I would like to say, the contractors, particularly the uh, uh, local authorities, you know, in, if you will see in the foreign country, the regular, they used to visit and, you know, the... Uh, map and the whole the plan of the building is the uh, already with the car of the you know officers always and they go and see that the how they are performing how they are implementing but in our case you know most of the time the our government buildings and government bridges they are collapsing due to the sub standards and uh, engineers are not giving the proper care. So proper monitoring is very, very important. Monitoring mechanism is lacking in the sun, such a construction. Then for old buildings, you know, in, uh, local uh, 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 corporation should, you know, take the uh, identification of the different type of buildings, you know, at least once in a year they should do that the uh, the, uh, regarding the quality of the building and very substantial measures uh, should be taken for uh, retrofitting at least for that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other questions from participants? One question from Kiran. Yeah. Arun? Yeah. 
there is one question from uh, mr kiran kondru uh, the question is sir in cities like hyderabad and mumbai even little rains produce flooding and stagnation how to practically deal with such situations yeah land is planning because you know uh, always our city uh, planners they violate and our you know we used to you know legalize the all illegal area in case of delhi you can see that the uh, many times we have revised uh, our land use plan for satisfy the local people for getting the vote you know people are constructing the houses without taking into consideration of the any plan or any and then because they understand that the after few years it will be legalized so what i would like to use the word environmental zoning is very very important in our land use planning now you know we have to totally th rethink on the various uh, planning process urban planning process uh, particularly you know we have to bring the urban health phenomena urban heat islands issue uh, these are the also these are the uh, uh, you know environmental zoning component uh, very very disaster related component these are the very very important this, this should become the part of our urban planning Thank you, sir. Balasundar Ishwaran, you want to ask something? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, please. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good morning, sir. Thank you for your wonderful presentation. Uh, sir, I wanted to ask. Um, I did my PhD in disaster itself in Tamil Nadu, and while doing it, I found many things like uh, disaster risk plan is very less in southern India, especially in Tamil Nadu. And as you are talking about flood. the flood is a major risk in tamil nadu even though i can understand the correlation that northern india has higher uh, frequency of flood and high intensity southern india has very less concern about flood and uh, doesn't india need to include those uh, flood situation and other important disasters and how can we integrate those into our policy and plannings so that it will be important for uh, southern tamil nadu people also sir yeah you know i would like to use the word low probability and high impact disasters you know these days we in india we are getting the low probability and high impact disaster and our policy makers are and communities are not able to prepare for that i think we have to take the very extra measure we have to link the ndma with the village plan even panchayat level i think we have to link i am giving you one example of uttarakhand earlier you know during monsoon time when i was going to in the himalayan university uh, uh, if one landslide by car generally because no oh, train is there so by car i found that the if one landslide occurs it takes whole day to clear the debris but what the uttarakhand did now they empower the local panchayat and they have given some equipment some grant and now very quickly the panchayat people used to come in that uh, landslide area if something occurs and they try to remove the debris so we have to empower the people we have to bring the such type of the policy where you know we have we should have a quick you know uh, recovery and quick response and it is possible when we can do at a panchayat level at a municipal level so this is a very very important that uh, uh, we talk about community disaster management plan but community disaster management plan only few places we are more successful but not everywhere so i think this we have to uh, uh, implement this one thank you sir thank you sir sir i would like to ask you some questions sir yeah, yeah. 
So when you talk about uh, the, in the event of climate change, which uh, community, the coastal community, those are living in coastal areas, have the urban community, those are living in mega cities, or million plus cities, or the population who live in mega cities in the coastal areas. How do you rank them, sir, according to their uh, vulnerability and the risk? Yeah, you know, uh, generally as per the, you know, IPCC projection and all, uh, coastal areas are more vulnerable and but you know many mega cities are located in the coastal area uh, then you know we have also the changes in the uh, microclimate uh, in recent days due to the several other anthropogenic activity and you can see this uh, very quickly we are having the uh, heat uh, wave and other type of the problems in the big city also and urban health you know and diseases you know as ICMR few years two years back you know released a very important data that 60 percent diseases more than 60 percent diseases are the environmental disease so uh, due to the environmental issue and the environmental problems so uh, it will have, you know, coastal area and also in the uh, big city and the mega city also because the flooding due to the uh, climate change also we are getting the flooding in the big city and these uh, mega cities are not well equipped and we have the worst form of visible poverty in the form of slums. So they are more affected. So, you know, that is why the flooding in the a mega city and city area, they they also suffer due to the climate change. So uh, every region, you know. Then another important problem for city where food will come. If suppose the food system is affected, then city people are not able to get the food. You know, this uh, time the you see the realizing this very important of the food during the COVID the Nobel Prize Committee, you know, selected the World Food Program for the uh, this year Nobel Prize because they supported the 50 years, a uh, 50 countries, more than 50 countries, you know, the food supply in this time. So, you know, food system is also very, very important. Water system is very, very important. City needs the water system. And if the climate change, water is affected, then uh, also so directly or indirectly, we have to see that mega city and cities are also affected by the climate change process. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I think there are three more questions. Uh, can I can I interfere? Uh, please. I'm master, sir. Please. Uh, there are uh, two questions I want to ask you, sir. One is uh, that uh, the disaster uh, management authority or state or central center they ask only the geoinformatics for their employment uh, mostly the geoinformatics people are from uh, civil engineers so there is no scope for job quest to enter into uh, the disaster uh, management authority or uh, state level or central level uh, this is one another thing is uh, 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 this uh, uh, geoinformatics and uh, disaster uh, studies are going together and in that respect we want the data, mega data like uh, earthquake or uh, uh, cyclone or uh, disaster or flood. So these uh, mega data, uh, getting the mega data is a big issue in India. So in uh, USGS we can get the data but uh, not in India. Uh, and uh, these are the two issues I want to talk That is uh, employment to geographers and getting mega data for uh, our research works. Thank you, Professor Kumasami. Uh, I know we have to uh, take the uh, you know initiative for parallel, apart from geography, a parallel course. You know, hope you will refer. Uh, you were also there, and we pass a. Uh, a resolution for a separate course on 
uh, geoinformatics, you know, for yes. BA level also. But so far, you know, this UGC people not responded, so we should try for that also. And uh, so that, you know, people will get the more, uh, you know, employment because the more engineering people, even in the SOM platform, if you see regarding the geography, recently I did the mapping and I uh, suggested to uh, uh, UGC for uh, preparing the geography related so, uh, SOM, you know, programs because most of the programs related to remote sensing are prepared by the IIT Kharagpur and IIT Kanpur. So uh, I think uh, I also given the some, I have given some uh, courses related to geomorphic, geoinformatic. So such courses, you know, uh, should be prepared also on SWAM. I don't know how they are proceeding and how they are moving. But I did the song mapping and I suggested that there is no any geography yes. uh, uh, course on the SRAM platform. Then, you know, regarding database, committee met and we passed and they talked. Already they uh, uh, considered that we have this data infrastructure development and all. But when you go to the uh, asking for data, it is not available. And better the uh, data, better the uh, policy. Without like uh, without having the better data and information, no policy and no uh, you know uh, planning can be successful. So very important, I think they should realize this. Uh, this. This. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Uh, Thanks. There's a question from uh, Mr. Ashish Kumar. He's a PhD scholar from our department. And his question is, in USA and in European countries, uh, they follow the ensemble flood forecasting system along with inundation modeling, which actually provides a lead time of seven to eight days. Whereas in India, uh, we recently shifted our uh, system to deterministic forecast where we get one in 24 hours lead time. So is that, uh, is this difference makes any difference in our uh, mitigation plan? That was his question. Hello. I think Professor, due to poor internet connection, left. Uh, no, sir, back. is that? Back. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Sir? Uh, May I repeat the question, sir? What's the question, sir? Yes, sir. Hello. Yeah, yeah, you can. You can. Yeah. You can read the question. Yes, yes, sir. Shall I ask the question, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah, there is a question from Ashish Kumar, and the question is, in USA and in some European countries, they follow ensemble flood forecasting system along with inundation modeling, which actually provides a lead time of seven to eight days. While, uh, whereas in uh, India, uh, we have recently shifted towards the deterministic forecasting model, which is having a, a lead time of only of 24 hours. Uh, is this makes any uh, difference or is there any shortcoming uh, after, uh, due to this uh, difference, time difference in our mitigation plan? This was his question. I think we have to improve our capacity, you know, I can tell you. Even after 15 days, if anybody in foreign country, they are going outside, they can take according to the weather, different type of clothes. And it is a so accurate, you know, forecasting. But you know, our we got Doppler radar and and also in case of this stream model you are telling. But you know, our modeling capacity and the uh, uh, 
forecasting capacity is not so accurate i can i'm very sorry to say that uh, uh in some time we are good you know in cyclone we are able to do lot of very good but in regarding the flooding and uh, uh drought we do not have the very good forecasting and we have to improve our capability as what i would like to tell you but in cyclone warming i think now we have a very good forecast and now we able to reduce the loss of loss uh, life in the andhra pradesh or the uh, odisha area west bengal odisha and other thank you sir thank you sir uh, there is one more question from lokesh kant uh as uh, and his question is as we know some country, countries have 6 seconds forecasting for earthquakes uh, in india uh, it is lesser than that so when can we expect the, the a shorter period forecasting uh, in the perspective of earthquakes with the availability of due because we have recent uh, technologies emerging technologies in this field so how when we can expect a uh, uh, yeah, short forecasting you model know, for earthquakes earthquake you know we do not have even if outside also we do not have very accurate earthquake forecasting so far you know on the basis of the cycle and uh, using the sar you know synthetic aperture radar in uh, jers and european resource satellite you know they did some you know exercise but i don't think it is a very very important i also in japan you know using the uh, uh, electric wave and uh, the uh, magnetic wave uh, so we have the difference and using the electric wave you know they try to forecast uh, so reduce some but you know it's not a so accurate they sometimes use the cultural factor also the movement of uh, uh, a different type of the animals and others but it is not so important and we have to work on that and uh, sar has a very pro- promising uh, remote sensing exercise where we can contribute for improving our status of earthquake forecasting thank you sir thank so you so much we must we must have stopped because you know i i yeah. have to go yes, sir, yes, another place yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Yeah. thank you so much for uh, sparing your valuable time with us sir uh, it was very informative and i hope our audience have enjoyed a lot and got uh, unique information from your lecture i may now invite uh, dr k bala subramani sir oh, to you. deliver the vote of thanks thank you sir thank you thank you arun uh, first of all uh, i would like to big uh, thank to professor r b singh sir uh, for accepting our invitation in spite of his very busy schedule uh, he is international figure uh, i hope that we have very important meeting at ig but still uh, he agreed to uh, deliver lecture uh, uh, to the students of our department as well participants from other uh, departments too uh, then we are uh, very grateful uh, not only for this lecture uh, to r b singh sir uh, for his effort the sincere effort to establish this department at central university of tamil nadu and uh, many students may not aware about it he is the like uh, forefather of us and he only like um, uh, wrote a like a recommendation letter to the vice chancellor and vice chancellor to establish uh, such a department and again you know this uh, uh, scope of this department or task of this department is to work on the disaster management that what that's what he mentioned in this letter and he insists that we need to uh, like establish the department of geography at central ministry of tamil nadu to take up the various disaster management projects uh, at the uh, like um, local level as, as well as to connect at the global level so for this um, we are very grateful to you sir and of course uh, no doubt about it you have very rich experience on disaster management and uh, as rightly pointed out by dr ramdeep if you not uh, delivering lecture today then who else so you are the apt person to 
like uh, commemorate uh, the International Day for the Fosters Reduction. And you are the person always will be connect uh, local to global as well as global to local. So you have uh, like not only a connection in terms of like the concepts, rather you have a connection in person too. So you are in the very highest position, position uh, in the International Development Union. As well, uh, you are always uh, like kind and accepting all our invitations, and you are uh, like always supporting us uh, to conduct uh, such kind of events. And uh, I hope uh, like many people are aware about it, uh, the contribution of uh, Professor R. B. Singh uh, to NCR to supplementary book on natural hazards and disaster management. Uh, personally, if you ask me, for the first time I know uh, Professor R. B. Singh through that book. So when I refer uh, concepts of uh, disaster uh, like management, I uh, like uh, found that book in CBSC and I gone to and he dedicatedly, meticulously uh, like uh, wrote uh, the concepts in very clear and crisp manner, and that is very comprehensive framework for, for uh, like the disaster management. And of course, you have like uh, seen the uh, like the saplings at uh, 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 higher secondary level that may be like grown as. Uh, Banyan tree one day, no doubt about it. And through this lecture, uh, again, you have to the fundamental concept. Uh, not to that, uh, and again, uh, you uh, like covered a uh, comprehensive view about uh, multi hazard framework and the disaster scenario in India. And you have also like mentioned about integrated risk assessment and its importance and different methods of like risk assessment to the students. As well as um, you have highlighted various initiatives of government of India and other citizens in India uh, uh, towards the disaster management. And very highlight of the lecture is uh, your suggestion to the students that to take up uh, dissertations on the disaster management uh, during their uh, like MSc or even like in their like, research program is a good, good idea. And I hope our students will uh, take your suggestions very seriously. And they will think up uh, with this brief note. Uh, uh, like, uh, on behalf of uh, the department, I would like to once again thank you, sir. And I am also equally thankful to all the participants. Uh, some of the participants are very noted, for example, Professor Kumar has. So I thank all the participants uh, to be part of this uh, wonderful event today. And we will. Uh, uh, do a needful for uh, build the path better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Balaji, Professor Sulochana Ji, Professor Kumar Swami, and other colleagues. All thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you so you. much, sir, for sparing your valuable time for us. So thank you, sir, Kumar Swami, sir. Thank Thanks you, sir. It is always encouraging. <laughs> you are also <laughs> enough of a mentor and uh, keep supporting like this, sir. So, Madam uh, Balu, every, all the faculty members I should have because I was just traveling, so that was the reason otherwise I could have been there. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank, you, thank, you, so much. thank you, sir. And dear thank participants, you. thank you so much for always supporting us. Please uh, come, uh, fill the feedback form so that we will get you a certificate. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.